Hello everyone, the New Year's mood is already beginning to appear little by little. Therefore, today we will recreate street food from all over the world. But this time we'll do food prepared at Christmas markets. And the first one for today is sweets from China called Dragon Beard. Caramel is taken and stretched into a large circle. Then all this is folded twice, stretched again, and folded. At the same time, all this is sprinkled with starch so that the caramel does not stick together. And so on and so on until you get very, very thin threads. Then they tear off a small part. Nuts are put inside and wrapped in the candy. So let's get started. Put a saucepan on the stove, pour 130 milliliters of water into it, and pour in 300 grams of sugar. That's it, now just leave it alone and wait until the syrup boils on the stove at the highest heat and insert the candy thermometer. The syrup continues to boil and it will be ready only when it reaches 108 degrees. Cut up a small part of a lemon, and squeeze the juice into a saucepan. Mix, and pour the syrup into some container. This is an invert syrup. It is needed so that when we cook the caramel, it doesn't crystallize. Pour 50 milliliters of invert syrup into a saucepan, and also 100 milliliters of water, and pour in 200 grams of sugar. We put all this on the stove again, and insert the thermometer, and at a low temperature, we cook the caramel to 121 degrees. After 20 minutes, it's ready. Now add the caramel in the pink dye. And mix it up. And it's ready. Now we unwrap the parchment and cut off a piece. Pour the caramel in the middle. We'll grab a baking sheet and we pour out half a kilogram of cornstarch on it. When the caramel is cooled down, you can work with it. It stretches well in your hands. We roll it in starch, and we begin to form a circle. Fold it twice, and continue to stretch. But it seems that the caramel is too soft, and just breaks under its own weight. Basically, nothing's working out. So we made another caramel, but we had already brought it to a temperature of 130 degrees, and so now it's not so easily torn. We managed to make some threads, but they still tear, so that'll be no good. And finally, we made a third caramel with a temperature of 140 degrees, and it is very tough. Kneading it is much more difficult, but the threads are more stable. We fold it twice, then four times, then eight, and 16. Gently, slowly stretch the caramel so that it doesn't break. We fold it again, some threads, of course, broke, but it's not a big deal. The main part is intact. Eventually, we finally got really thin caramel threads. And you can already make some candy out of them. Using a hatchet, we divide the caramel into three parts. And for the filling, we take a pack of nuts. Open it up. Squeeze the pack so that there was no less air inside. And we pound the nuts with a wooden hammer. Done. Pour some of the nuts onto caramel threads and wrap it up. And now we're left with a really interesting candy. It's done, so let's give it a try. There's something to this. These caramel threads feel like thick cotton candy. And the caramel melts in your mouth too, just slower. The next recreation is mulled wine. During the New Year holidays, it is sold just about everywhere. And now I will show you one of the most delicious versions of it. To do this, first we'll take some oranges, and with the help of a vegetable peeler, we create some zest. Done. And we don't want a bitter taste, so we pour in boiling water. Let it stand for a minute and drain the water out. Now we roll the oranges out on the table, cut them in half, and squeeze the juice directly into the saucepan. You 
also will need the juice of half a lemon. Done. For the spices, we need two pieces of dried ginger, cloves, cardamom, star anise, and of course a stick of cinnamon. We take all these spices and toss them into the saucepan. Top it off with a little nutmeg. We put this on the stove. Pour out some sugar, mix, and just boil the orange juice so that it becomes more concentrated. Pour half of this concentrate into another saucepan. We take some semi-dry red wine and open it up. Pour this into the orange juice with spices. We lower in a thermometer here and heat this all up to 75 degrees. With this, the mold wine is ready. Pour this into a glass, garnished with cinnamon, a slice of small orange, and some star anise. To be honest, I don't like alcohol, so the cameraman will try this for us. Well, yeah, it's smooth. Basically, he liked it. And for our younger viewers, we will make a non-alcoholic mulled wine. For this, we'll open up some grape juice and pour this into the second half of our orange concentrate. Then we throw in some frozen cranberries. All this needs to be boiled and poured into glasses. Let's try it. It's very rich and delicious. Well, it's warming up now. Just what you need on a cold winter's night. But everything has been mulled wine made like this. But what about mulled wine with white wine and tangerines? Let's cut the tangerines in half. And squeeze the juice right into the saucepan. The tangerine peel will also be needed. Cut this into small pieces. And we throw this into the saucepan. We also add sugar, cloves, star anise, and of course cinnamon. We pop this onto the stove, we grab some white wine, and open it up, and pour it in. We lower the thermometer into the saucepan and wait for it to reach 75 degrees. You can pour it in now. And give it to the cameraman for testing. Mmm, tastier than the previous one. And the last treat for today, this is a Trudelnik. It's a type of Czech street food. A yeast dough is rolled into a thin sausage, then wound into a round shape, and sprinkled with sugar and cinnamon, and then thrown in to bake, either into an oven or over coals. They are also filled with different fillings. Let's cook. The main thing is to make the perfect dough. To do this, we measure out 500 grams of flour on the scales and pour it into a bowl. Add a bag of dry yeast to the flour and mix it up. In another bowl, break two eggs. And pour out 100 grams of sugar. And mix this up well. Warm up 200 milliliters of milk. Pour the warm milk onto the eggs. Mix. And send the liquid into the dry mixture. We begin to knead the dough. And cut off 100 grams of butter. And we melt all this in a saucepan. And in two turns, we pour this into the dough. Now we mix it all up with our hands. We're left with a pretty elastic dough. We leave it in the bowl and cover it up with saran wrap. Leave this in a warm place to rise. In the meantime, we will prepare the molds. We will have two round ones and one conical mold. So we take a metal cone and wrap it in foil. We wrap the excess over the sides and a layer of cardboard on top. We insert an iron rod, and we are left with a sort of a hanging cone. Cardboard tubes are also wrapped in foil. And now we finish the sides. We put an iron rod through, and everything is prepared. So that the dough can easily be taken off, spray some oil on it. By this time, the dough has already risen. We'll knead it a little bit. And we divide it into six parts. Roll out each part into a thin sausage. And then wind it over the mold. Now we bend the edges over. 
one is ready. Let's do the next one. And the last cone. Done. Now sprinkle some cinnamon sugar on a tray. And now we dump our future Trudel mix into it. And back onto the baking sheet and into the oven at 190 degrees until golden brown. Done. We take the Trudel mix out of the form. Now we take some chocolate and beat it on the table. And open it up. And pour the broken chocolate into a bowl. And put all of this into a steam bath. And melt the chocolate. We lower the trudelnik into the chocolate. Sprinkle some coconut shavings on top. And then dip the next one. And sprinkle it with crushed nuts. And do the third one here as well. We take three cups. And we put our trudelnik inside. One of them will be given a filling. To do this, cut up a banana. And add all this inside. And also open up some chocolate paste. And throw that in as well. Then some more banana and the final layer of chocolate paste. Done. You can eat all of this with a spoon and bite into the dough. The whole deal with this dessert is that it has very tasty toe. It's soft on the inside and crunchy on the outside. Well, then it smells like cinnamon. Basically the most New Year's related thing you can imagine. And if this video gets 300,000 likes, then the next video will be all about the most expensive New Year's table setup. And we will try to break last year's record. And also subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. Bye everybody.